Hello again. This is still Kingdom Essentials, Empowerment for the Kingdom Age, and this is session 18. We're continuing on talking about the Holy Nation. So this is part two of the Holy Nation. And the emphasis of this is the governmental ministries of the kingdom. So yes, in a kingdom, remember the kingdom is a governmental structure. And the way that the Lord has put things in motion, it really is a governmental structure. So as we come into the kingdom age and as we wake into the kingdom, we really return to the definition of ministry, which really is a governmental term used in parliament and used in um, in countries that have that have a, a kingship or a kingdom. And so we covered that in the past, especially around the first session, regarding that the kingdom has ministries as their departments to carry out the functions in the kingdom. So just a quick recap on that. But I want to start with talking about the government. Everything is upon the shoulders of the body of Christ of Jesus himself. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and 7 which is really the a cornerstone for the kingdom and for the governmental process that is to take place and is taking place. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and 7 For unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, we talked about that a whole lot, and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Hallelujah. I love that it says that the government will be upon his shoulder because when you put the, the majesty of the robe on a king, it rests on his shoulder. But interesting, I want you to see what the description, what the scripture says about the description of the body of Christ, especially how Paul would describe it in his letter to the Corinthians and Ephesians. So in First Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 27, identifying us as the body of Christ. It says, you are the body of Christ and members in particular. Then Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 through 6, says there is one body, one body, and one spirit, just as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. It is truly the truth when we say that Jesus Christ is the head of the body. He has preeminence over all. And if Colossians, in the letter to Colossians, chapter 1, verse 18, says he is the head of the body, the ecclesia, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. When it was referring to the ecclesia, the church, it wasn't talking about an organization or even a denomination. It was talking about a, a, a group, an ecclesia community that together make up one body. And Jesus is the head of that one body. Interesting. So when we look at this as one body, just say that Jesus is the head of this body and its members in particular, that the government rests on the shoulder. If he is the head of the body of Christ, he is the head. Jesus is the head of the ecclesia, preeminence over all. And the government rests on his shoulder because we are in him. That puts tremendous responsibility and honor upon us, the body of Christ, because it rests on his shoulder. And so we we look at this and we say, we look for the scripture and say, well, is that is that true? Yes, because he made us kings and priests unto our God. And we keep saying Revelation chapter 1 verse 6 and chapter 5 verse 10. And that we are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a holy nation, 
a peculiar people set apart to show forth the praises of him who's called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. So get a picture of this body of Christ, seated with him in heavenly places yet in the earth. He's the head, seated at the right hand of the Father, the head of this body. And we are the body, and members in particular, as the scripture says, it's occupying heaven and earth, and the government rests on his shoulder. That puts quite a bit of honor and responsibility in this holy nation, in the kingdom of God on the earth. We do have a royal function. It is truly amazing. So... When we talked about just a few minutes ago, that ministry, just to remind you that it is a governmental term. The original use of it is a governmental term, and it describes the functions, various functions of a kingdom. So we remember in a kingdom that has a parliament, you have a prime minister. You have the ministry of defense, the ministry of agriculture, the ministry of education. Where in a republic, a democracy, you would most likely have departments, departments you know, like the Department of Defense, the Department of Agriculture, Department of Education, and so forth. So to remind us that during the biblical times, that when they talked about the word ministry, they knew they were talking about a kingdom, that Jesus was talking about a kingdom, but the ministry, when they used the word ministry, they were seen as functions within a government, not something... And, and it in a calling, yes, it had to do with the calling, and and in the governmental and the parliamentary system, it also has to do with the calling, your your abilities, your skills, and so forth. But in the biblical times, when they would talk about it, it was they didn't have a difference. They saw as a government rising up and hopefully taking over Caesar and all them. <laughs> that was their major hope, but they still saw it governmentally because that was their foundation that was their thought processes and so we have no difference if when we start getting grounded and aware of a kingdom system that we actually have a great responsibility as royalty within this and that when we talk about ministries we're talking about like departments functioning in a, in a nation so uh, that is kingdom that is truly kingdom and it's a kingdom structure so, and I hope that's clear. And again, with the spirit of wisdom and revelation, he can make all things known. And don't forget, just to throw this in here, that, you know, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the honor of kings to search it out. That's Proverbs 25, verse 2. So search it out and allow the kingdom mindset to change us. He has great, he has bestowed upon us incredible honor and uh, because of grace, but we're still in him who has all power and authority in heaven and earth, in him whose government, the government rests upon his shoulder. Amazing. So now when we start talking about ministries, uh, there's something I've come across and I've noticed that many of us, and, and the Corinthians had this had this trouble. Let me just say a little bit about the you know the Corinth the Corinthians, as I understand it. In Corinth, you know, Paul had to address it because they were really gauging themselves and you know status and how high based on the amount of gifts they had and and all and so forth and who could prophesy this and who you know all it was very competitive and they would compare gifts to each other and um, Paul basically had to talk to them about love, talk to them that the body. And we'll talk about that in a second, that the body is, every bit of it is important and every bit of it's precious and has uniqueness to it. So, but interesting that our, that the identity for many has to do with their calling, where they identify themselves as an apostle or that they really have their identity as being a prophet and they, or a, a pastor, or teacher, counselor, evangelist. And I, um, it was always something that, gr that graded with me a little bit about that because the Lord said and keeps saying this over and over repeatedly in the scripture as we keep reading Revelation chapter 1 verse 6, chapter 5 verse 10, 1 Peter 2, 9 that uh, we, are, we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. 
And the reason I say this is because the key words in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 6 and chapter 5 and verse 10 is that he said he made us kings and priests, made us kings and priests. Now, if the Lord makes you something, that is who you are. So I look and then I say, you know, we are royalty, kings and priests. And I look at it and I go, the function I do in the prophetic office or apostolic office or pastoral or as a musician, that is a function that I do. That is something that I have an ability to do and I may fulfill an office in that. But I made royalty. I made kings and priests. And so, and then our identity, uh, I like where it goes on to in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, where Paul says, you're no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. So our identity, remember, lineages are determined by your house, the household you're in, the lineage you're in. And we're citizens in the household of God in him who's the Alpha and Omega. That is who we are. That's what he's made us to be. And also we're joint heirs with him. Romans 8, verse 17, made joint heirs. Children of God made joint heirs. This is who we are. This is our identity. This is our family. This is what identifies us, is our royalty. Now, say, but, so, but what about apostles and prophets and that? I have a great regard with it. But that's not our identity. That's a function. And people may go, oh, oh, well, listen, when an apostle dies or a pastor dies, he's replaced with another pastor. When a king and priest who's come into the presence of God, seated with heavenly places, to be absent from the body is present with the Lord, he is still royalty. That is forever. That's eternal. But the apostles and prophets, this is what it says, point blank, listen to the words. Remember, he made us kings and priests, but in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 10 and 11 it says this he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fulfill all things verse 11 and he himself gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. There's so much I want to say here, but the point here is that he made us kings and priests, but gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some teachers, and counsels of some evangelists. There's a big difference between what he's made us to be, which is our identity in him, and gave some to do a work, to do a ministry. You are royalty, but he gives some to do these specific ministries, departments. And what is the purpose? Well, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, the purpose is to build. We've already talked about the building living stones. Their purpose is to build. It's like for, the way I look at it, if, uh, and, and just shooting from my hip a little bit here, but when uh, you have to build a house, you're going to ha you have a house. You're the owner. You're the one. You're the royalty of that house. I mean, you're going to live in it. You dwell in it. So you hire some that are masons, hire that are electricians, you hire some that are roofers, and people say, how could you compare that to this? Because Paul did. Because in Peter, in 1 Peter, he talks about building living stones, building fitly joined together. Because he, and Paul referred to himself as a master builder. Because they were given some, you have to have some in order to get these things done, you know, and to do it correctly, and they're all just as important. You can't build a house without the foundation, and you can't live in it if you don't have a roof. You, you, you know, you need the electricity, you need the plumbing. They're all given. They're all specific traits, offices, if you will, that build up this structure into a perfect habitation for you to live in. The royalty, let's just say. 
Well, there's not really a comp there's not much of a difference here in how this is written and and the structure because it says that they are given some to build to 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 equip the saints for the work of the ministry departments for the and for the building up of the body of Christ really in the knowledge of the son of god till we all come into the unity of faith of the knowledge of the son of god which is what i'm hoping we're doing here unto a perfect man remember the one body the head the body government on the shoulder and unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ in other words we're being built up and <laughs> i'm not sure we've seen anything yet but you know, when we're going back to the building, when you're building a house, right? You, you, and you get the plumbers done and this, and you got the landscapers, and you got all, and it's complete, and the day comes to move in. And you move in because this is who you are. This is where you dwell. And it's a habitation, and you live in it because you are the owner. You are the one that is to occupy. It's, you know, to say who you are in there. Well, you don't have the need anymore at that point for the roofers. You don't have the need for the masons or, or the ones that build the foundation. It's all there. From time to time, you may need a bit of uh, maybe a repair here and there. But you don't need those to build anymore because the building is done. So you give some. And the implication is... It's a temporary job, it's a function, it's a ministry that once you're done, you're done, but you are always royalty. So he made us royalty, but he gave some to do ministries. But we all have ministry, but he gave some to do these specific offices also. So when we look at men, they're, yes, they deserve honor. Yes, they deserve your support. They deserve all of our support in this temporary because they've given their life he gave some and they answered the call to fulfill that ministry that governmental ministry in the building up of the body of christ if that's their heart and we'll talk about we'll talk about that a little later it is an honorable thing and it deserves support and they equip and lift up to for others to do the ministry for the the great commission and so forth so uh, it's really uh, powerful. Anyway, we, we reside in the household of God. Think about this. We're being built up and made a habitation into a habitation. We reside in that household that the builders are building and that some that those honorable ones that have answered a call in their true heart that they are literally building it for a, for a dwelling place in him and literally because we're in him really for, for all of us. So when we look at the amazing thing about the royal status is that in our royal status as kings and priests, when we hear this of Psalm 145 verse 13, your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. He's talking to royalty there that come and sit with him in those heavenly places in, in all generations. It, it's truly amazing. And we remember that that dwelling place that he is built up and that he, he he's, he's resides in and made it a habitation of his forever is uh, Psalm 132, verse 13 and 14, where the Lord has chosen Zion this, he has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. And of course, we have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, to the city of the living God, in the, in the company of innumerable angels. Just, we can't even count them all. See, we've come to a structure that is being made and now it's being manifest in the earth, the restoration of a tabernacle, a dwelling. And our royal status is in him to literally be a habitation and to habitate with him, in him, through him, for him. It will come to completion in the earth as it is in the heavens. 
So I, I want to be clear that our identity, and no one's going to move me off this, is not about what we do. It's not about the ministry we occupy. That is a function we do unto the Lord. Our identity, we've been made. I like that. You know, in Italian families, that's a very powerful word. You've, you're a made man. You're a made man. You know, it, this is what you have been made. You didn't build into it. This is what you've been, you've been made. And so a, being made kings and priests unto our God. As a, and then some are given. So I just emphasize that that's a major shift for us in the kingdom and in the function, especially when we're carrying out carrying out the functions and governmental ministries or the the functions of a kingdom. Okay, so I th I'm hope I've stressed that enough, which I'm not sure I could ever stress it enough. So when we talk about the foundation of the habitation of God. Okay, let's just read, I want to read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 18 through 22, because in our royalty, some are given to be apostles, some are given to be prophets. There is so much good information out there about what the true office of the apostle does and what the true office of a prophet does, but I really just want to talk to you here about the foundation and what it says here in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. It says, for through him... Through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Beautiful. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Thank you, Lord. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So you see, this is comparing also back to like it was in Peter, that in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, um, yes, 4 through 8, then here in Ephesians, he's saying the same thing to the Ephesians, that we are really being built together and so as a habitation and so the foundation which was being laid by apostles and prophets so you see they had there is a specific function they have to do and so but still all are being built together as a habitation for, of god in the spirit that's amazing so all of us are being built together into a in one body and royalty but they there has been given some to lay the foundation for that to begin to happen you know you understand so i it's really tremendous so we also say that if the structure is not sound and we'll, we'll we can talk about this it the foundation is not sound it's as you build you're going to have cracks and fissures and it will probably collapse and whenever there's problems with the building, it's usually because there's been problems in the foundation when you have structural issues. Well, it, that doesn't, that's not any different here because it has to be a sure foundation. That's why we refer to Jesus as the sure foundation. And we'll read that in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. It says, Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, the main foundation, and then being built, laying the foundation, the apostles and prophets, their role is like masonaries, making sure this the foundation is set so he can build, so it can build, and so that uh, that structure can come up in a unity unto a perfect man, a perfect structure. So Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16 says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation. Wow. A tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. And we talked about how stones are made out in the quarry, how stones are fashioned, cut out, and 
and then fashioned exactly the way they need to be, then brought to the building site. But at the building site, nothing was heard in terms of the um, chiseling or the, the fashioning of the stone. It had to be perfect. So you see, there is, there is a great role for a foundation to be laid. But still, we're still talking about royalty. We're still talking about dwelling in Zion with him. We're talking about being built up as a habitation even in the earth. And, <laughs> and his, his literally kingdom emerging on the earth as it is in the heavens. And those that are called and answered the call, they are given. They've been given to that and they've answered the call. Still, everyone, we've been made kings and priests unto our God, royalty. But he gives some, and he gives some, to do this work of the building up of the body of Christ in the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. So I want to move forward and talk about the purpose and vision of these offices, of these ministries or departments, but ministries in the kingdom. So in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13, it says, and we'll read this again. And he gave, he himself gave some to be apostles and some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So the work of the these fivefold ministries and the vision let me explain their vision and and is to build up the body of Christ in the unity of faith in the knowledge of the son of God unto a perfect man. In other words, to make it short that to make things simple here is that it is they are to build but their vision is to see the structure i'm walking on thin ice here maybe it is not to see it's not our personal visions that we want this type of ministry this many people this big building and everything else our ministry if your answer to the call of the apostle and prophet is to see the body of christ built up in the unity of faith not in the unity of faith unto the knowledge of the Son of the God, Son of God, it is not to be have the biggest ministry in the block. It is not to even be in comparison. We look at the vision is to look at the entire body completely all over the world and how it's being built up and that we fulfill that the apostles and prophets keep fulfilling the role in their sphere of influence and to to not ever be in competition with others and to the visions to see the kingdom emerge that the body of christ be built up in the knowledge of the son of god and to see his kingdom appear on the earth as it is in the heavens i know that there are times that in order to do that the lord as we're seeing that he'll give us resources to work towards and accomplish that goal but many, many feel that th their goal is to have a big influential ministry and then move on. And that's wonderful that we may have this influence. But our focus seems to become how effective of the ministry we have by the numbers and all that that we reach and, and, and so forth. You know what I'm talking about. But, and the vision. Many have, we buy into the vision and of men to build this or to have this or to reach. I, 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 I'm with that. I get that. But when it's, it, when it seems to be for the purpose of just the ministry to grow in, and we don't have even the verbiage in the days we're in, and we don't see that, we don't see that our concern is for the entire kingdom to grow that our vision is literally to see that kingdom emerge on the earth the body being built up into a habitation and that in there we they are equipping and encouraging and lifting up the saints it's not so much that one serves the vision of an apostle or a prophet or a pastor but they're the ones that they already have a vision 
in, a, in, in according to this, they already have the vision. And what they do is they lift up the body of Christ for them to hear the, the, the hear the voice of the Lord by dwelling in that heavenly realm, by them seeing how valuable they are, equipping into that ministry that they are to do. And if the Lord so shows favor for them to have to be able to talk to hundreds or thousands and it's more than the apostle in many places, that, that's kind of shunned upon. But I tell you this, that in the true vision, we don't worry about that. In the true vision of the body, we lift up and we continue to exhort in the knowledge of the Son of God who you are. You've been made royalty. You have a preciousness. And so this is what the offices are to fulfill. When someone accepts this office of apostle and prophet, it is not so much to build and have so much and have numbers and, and to be uh, well off. It is not that and to be honored. As a matter of fact, it's to be a foundation. And though I'm going off script here a little bit in a sense, I'm in a building right now. I know there's a foundation here. I don't see it. But I know there's a foundation here. Because the building functions and it, it's serving its purpose. I say to you that really that as we lift up that he increases, the Lord increases in his body. It's not about how great we are as apostles. It's about how we serve him in the work of the ministry because we're royalty and we answer the call and that is a surrender basically of your life and it is it is it's really not supposed to be a platform to gain honor though there is honor involved don't get me wrong and don't be disrespectful honor those that serve in that that see that the the kingdom of god is being raised up that that see the preciousness in in others and and that see each living stone as royalty as part of the habitation of god that is really tremendous and to see them each fulfill their destiny each stone and each person so I, i'd say this that the offices I'm, i want to read this cherish the precious gift that is in each member they're not threatened by it they cherish the precious gift that is in each num in each member each living stone of the body of christ accompanied with passion to, f to see the fullness of each person's calling and potential fulfilled. Not just cherish the gift, but with passion, support them into the f fulfilling of that, of that incredible gifting and calling that they have. Always reminding them who they are. We're to demonstrate in the apostolic and prophetic were to demonstrate honoring the royalty of God because every one of them are cherished, loved of God, and they are the citizens of the household of God. So yes, we may guide them, and yes, we may give them things to, 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 to think about, and to, but that builds them up in seeing who they are in Christ. But we cherish them and honor bring honor and demonstrate honor because of their royal status in the body of christ yes it is foundational very much so so what i want to say is this is that if these offices that i'm just saying if they are true okay if they are true to the kingdom ministerial parameters we just talked about kingdom ministerial parameters i'm not talking about a church organization now i'm talking about kingdom ministerial in other words the ministries of a kingdom governmental if they are true to the kingdom of god's governmental ministerial parameters they will they will ensure growth in the members of the body of christ and they will strengthen every stone and let me read ephesians chapter force again verse 14 and 15 we just finished reading uh till we come verse 13 till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ that's the function of 
the fivefold ministry, the apostles, the prophets, the counselors, the, the pastors, the teachers. I like to say evangelists in there, you know, but that's the function. And if it's true, we read on in verse 14, and it's true to these ministerial kingdom governmental parameters. It says that we should no longer be children dependent on mommy and daddy. Do not, we're not to foster dependence upon the pastor. We're to foster, raise up a child there to grow and to look to the Lord and be that precious stone to, to the precious stone to the Lord in the building and fulfill their destiny and calling. Let me say that, that we should no longer be children. Stop, we, stop being dependent. Find that place that builds you up and sets you on your feet and cherishes that which you are and what you're called to. No longer children tossed to and fro and carried away about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful planning, but speaking the truth in love. We may grow up. We may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Just like I said, speaking truth in love Grow up into Christ yourself. That's what we're to do. That's what the officers are to do. Verse 16. From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Think about it. When we all start fulfilling... Every part is very important. The foundation builders need to be building this so that they know every single part is cherished. Every single part is loved. And so what, what happens is that it begins to supply. They, it, we begin to fulfill our ministry, our function. And what it happens is it, it builds up this body in love. It builds itself up in love because it's cherishing one another. It's not being enslaved to the vision of one, but rather it is growing up in not being tossed to and fro or going to every other prophetic conference to get a word instead of growing instead of taking the word and growing up in it where we, we like to get words because it makes us feel good and then the doctrines keep changing. But when we recognize the truth, it is empowering you and motivating you to be built up in love, the truth in love, so that we come together and cherish each other's giftedness, cherish each other's function, because it supplies, just like it says here, that, that every joint gets supplied. Everyone has a special function, and he knows exactly where it is to fit, and that's the edifying of the body. That is our role. Our vision is to be to see this in the body of Christ, to be built up not tossed to and fro. And so if I say a few things that may be offensive is because I have seen a few things. I have seen where, where people are, their dependence is fostered. And when we talk about the house of Saul, and we'll talk a little bit, we may talk a little bit about that, where he fostered loyalty. And that was the, the, the litmus test of how spiritual you were, how loyal you were to this king, this head and his vision. And you had to be loyal and you had to be, do exactly and be there at his every whim and foot if you're going to show honor. Well, when we're building up in love and building up someone in, in the truth of God and they're coming into the preciousness and you're supplying that, they are going to be filled with love and give due honor. They are going to supply and provide that also which is needed in the body, which includes the apostles and prophets. Remember, we're all in that ministry work, in the ministerial, governmental, kingdom of God work. We've been given to that. We've answered a call to that. True, but we're made, all of us are made kings and priests unto our God. So, um, <laughs> wow, this is, this is great. I, I want to... Uh, take just a couple moments and talk about um, this is more per, you know more of a personal observation because Jesus said 
this in Matthew 7, chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. And I'm feeling led right now. It's not in my notes, but it does say counterfeit purposes and vision. I, I want to add something here that people, those that are experts in counterfeit, and take this as a word of wisdom, that are experts in counterfeit money, that the way they become experts is because all their study, in all their study and everything they learn, they never once look at a counterfeit bill. They only study the real thing and know every detail, every sense about it, you know, the touch, the feel, even maybe the smell, the exact color, all that. They know it so inside out that if you put anything else in their hand, they'll know right away that it's not the real thing. That's counterfeit because they only know truth that's why we speak the truth and if in these ministries to each other in in love but for the purpose of not gaining your own personal niche in the kingdom but for edifying building up the body of christ literally so jesus warned of that so there's there's some basic observations I've made like when we've talked about the house of Saul versus the house of David you know everything served Saul and everything had to come through Saul where in David's house everything he had including himself served and blessed the Lord so there was access completely into the whole you know into the to bless the Lord but even before in before the Ark of the Covenant and everything was used to bless the Lord and the people knew it and they gave the king great honor more honor than any other king in history as far as I'm concerned so uh, we've talked a bit about the comparisons in in, in past sessions but um, this is what I feel is a true and pure motivation for in these ministerial kingdom positions governmental positions I feel a true and pure motivation when they are viewing the members of the body Christ is this to they recognize to recognize the gifts and callings in a member's life and with them search out with them search out the plan and purpose of God for their calling cherishing their every advancement with a great trust in the Lord that it is he that is placing the member in their intended position and function Rejoicing in the journey with them and rejoicing as their destiny is reached, as the Lord is called. What I feel is false and counterfeit <laughs> is this, is recognizing an ability in a member and seeing how they can further along one's visions and desires. I'm going back to this. If it's the, your vision and desires, and if that's the case, then the vision and desire that that one may have is really not the body of Christ, but they see themselves being built up and they come to the conclusion that that is the kingdom of God. No, it's not. It, 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 it looks like it and it's a part of it and there are some honorable things in it. But when we look at others, false and counterfeit, when we're recognizing the ability of others and how they can fit into your ministry we're disregarding what the call of God may be on their life and we're not even searching it out and finding out and lifting them up into that you'll be amazed what happens when we do that and we find out that what they're doing benefits the body including yourself in more ways than you could possibly have designed for what you feel it fits into you you know when I say you into a person into a person's vision so let me read this let me read the whole thing, the false and counterfeit. It's recognize, recognizing an ability in a member and seeing how they can further along one's own visions and desire. The members are viewed as theirs. To serve them and their own desires, counting this as loyalty and godly order. The member's function and calling is only recognized to the point in which their purpose fulfills the vision and desire of the one in office. 
I'd like to read that again, but I'd rather go back to emphasizing what a true and pure motivation is, and that is to recognize the gifts and callings in a member's life and with them search out the plan and purpose of God for the calling, cherishing their every advancement with a great trust in the Lord that it is He that is placing the member in their intended position and function, rejoicing in the journey with them and rejoicing as their destiny is reached. Now what I feel is paramount when we're all together is the absolute presence of God. That when we come together and we, we're fulfilling, in, uh, operating in our offices and fulfilling the true ministerial function, that we're really to, the apostolic and prophetic is to lay a foundation for the presence of God, even for the people of God, even when we gather and get together. And to keep in mind for those that you're with and those that the Lord has brought you in and you just together in a gathering. Imagine one day we'll all be together, that they are a holy nation. They are a royal priesthood, First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. They are kings and priests unto our God. They are citizens of the household of God. And we've gone over all these scriptures. They have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, and gathered, and Jesus were in his presence because two or more are gathered in his name. We have really come to that. And the ap apostolic and prophetic really starts really reminding and, and helping them, lifting them up, and by encouraging, exhorting, and comforting, and edifying who they are. And that as they begin to lift that sound of praise and to decree their inheritance, the kingdom, that it literally does change that atmosphere like we talked about with the worship and praise as it does that that we really begin to see the holy spirit grow in them be baptized in them they become discipled in this and as they bless the lord we cherish with them and re and rejoice with them when we see the fruition start happening and the lord placing them as he sees fit and we come alongside them and bless and bless them. We we I want to look at when you look at um, recognizing each member has a special place and gift. That in Romans chapter twelve verse uh, four through ten, that this really Paul starts he he encourages us to begin to look at the body as one body, but members in particular each joined together, and that. We all have special giftings, and it, it, not everyone has to be the head apostle. There's everybody's important. It really is. And when we say the head apostle or prophet, we think of it this way. Actually, it's this way. It's lifting up. So to begin to cherish this, we first have to have to hold on in the presence of God. Hold on so that everybody in this place, in that heavenly realm. And man, the Lord's just been opening up things in these days that we're in right here. Because even in Zoom conferencing, it happens whether someone is on the other side of the world in Taiwan or here in the east part of the United States, we sense being in the same place and it doesn't change. As a matter of fact, we're operating in these offices in the heavenly realm while in the earth. Talk about the kingdom coming on the earth as it is in the heavens. But here's Romans Chapter 12, verse 4 through 10, talking about the uniqueness of every member. And this we need to get hold of. And this has to become our vision and processing when we are even gathered together. It says, For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, but they're still royalty. So we, being many, are one body in Christ. Huh and individually members of one another. How many ones does he keep saying? We're members one another. And it's not even talking about, and this one has more, you know, more, uh, this one is more important than another. It doesn't say that at all. Verse six, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. Let us use them. If prophesy, 
Let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. And that, that I could talk about a little bit. Just general, to prophesy is to exhort, comfort, and edify another. It's not always trying to fortune tell and tell the future. No, it's really to exhort them. This is prophecy prophetic when I say you're kings and priests, that you are a royal priesthood. It edifies, it lifts up. It's a prophetic unction. Okay? The encouragement, building yourselves up in love, is a prophetic action. It really is. So let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry. In other words, administering functions to and one another. Let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor giving preference to one another and that is another way of saying that we cherish one another and we want to see the best for them so and in, in this romans letter he's addressing specific things so there are things and paul does say about decency and decently and in order and decency i guess you could say <laughs> so let love be without hypocrisy, that this is the vision of that of those ministerial offices we we're talking about governmentally. And so that we literally want to see them grow into these things. Uh, truly, uh, truly amazing. So uh, when we come and minister to the Lord, some things have never changed. In the Holy of Holies, they, they would bring, you know, the sacrifices. They would come in and bring the sacrifice, and everything had to be right. Well, since we are covered by the blood of the Lamb, we come into the Holy of Holies, and we still bring sacrifices. And Hebrews talks about that we, there we bring a continual sacrifice of praise. Remember this before I jump in. In First Peter chapter two verse nine, the royal priesthood, a holy nation, a chosen generation. Uh, peculiar people set apart to show forth the praises of him who's called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. And we could go back into praise and all that happens during that time. It's amazing. So Hebrews uh, thirteen fifteen, you know, and he's just explaining, the writer of Hebrews was just explaining how we have access to the Holy of Holies because of the blood of the Lamb. He says, therefore, by him, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So we stay in prayer with that, and when we get together, we lift up praise, but we're doing it in the Holy of Holies now, in the throne room of God. Not the earth, in the earth reaching we, into the heavens. We stand in the heavens, and because we're standing in the earth, we're releasing it into the earth. And the knowledge of the glory of the Lord fills the earth. But this, this is an amazing function of all, everybody. That is a royal function. It, as you remember when we talked about priests, ministering to the Lord, giving him, you know, ministering to him. And in that place, comforting, bringing him what, what he deserves, administering that. And yet the earth gets to hear that sound. It's also a royal situation as kings and priests where that sound is now being released in the earth but we bring the sacrifice of praise continually and keep it on our lips it says here that in psalm 104 that we enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful to him and bless his name and so when we enter the holy of holies which we always are we always are bringing in thanksgiving and giving him praise as we can as we enter in it's funny we are always seated with him but when we really gather on purpose it lit i know it brings the heavens and the earth into alignment because we are purposely coming into his gates into his courts into the holy of holies and we enter those gates with with praise and into his courts now we enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise it's really remarkable see they had it when they were writing this they were looking at their tabernacle structure but it hasn't changed because he's the same yesterday today and forever and we do thank the lord 
for that. <laughs> we give him praise and honor for that. So let me uh, let's uh, let me continue on. So we've already mentioned that we are a royal priesthood, the chosen generation, set apart to show forth the praises of Him who's called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. And we do give you thanks and praise, O Lord, for what you what you are doing in this day and waking us up for sure. So I want to read uh, the manifestation of the presence of God. And this is really of a personal experience. Uh, I'm talking a little bit more about the role of the foundations of the foundation builders. That's what our role is, the foundation builders. That is what we've been given to do, to be builders. And to, to put a structure that, that is a sure foundation and that can be built upon and the stones be placed as he, as he desires, as it says in Scripture. And uh, so I want to just recall this. He is the head of the body. We are the body of Christ. Okay? And when we gather, we've been gathering this place for many years and just seeking the Lord, searching the Lord. The one rule as we come is that we bless the Lord. We've had personal revelation that we have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, that we are truly seated with him, blessing him face to face. The manifestations of this have been amazing, especially when we come up alongside people and, and prophesy by exhortation, comfort, uh, edifying, uh, and bringing comfort that they are the royalty of God. They're covered by the blood of Jesus. Yes, praying for them, ministering to their needs, but then ultimately coming together and letting them lift up a voice, joining that one sound we talked about. And what has happened is that as we've come together and we see the unique gifts of people, and uh, and yes, there are times that I that the Lord will lay on me to speak a few things. But what was really amazing, maybe just to, to guide some things or to exhort or lift up, but what is truly amazing when we've come to this place where we're, we're really blessing the Lord and we're guiding by making sure and edifying each other who they are in Christ and blessing the Lord and, and preferring one another in love because of who they are of royalty, we, we started to notice something. And I, I, I want to read this in Isaiah chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, which has become kind of a, a base scripture for even when we gather. Because I, I love the fact that we've come up here, as it says in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, hearing the sounds of the trumpet like John did. And, but we're corporately experiencing that. We corporately experience that. It's really amazing. But that we have ascended uh, Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, in the company of, you know, to the city of the living God. This is real significant. And so uh, in Isaiah chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, Isaiah prophesies this. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. Many people shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the, house of, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. And we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And when we began to realize... I. I could spend days just giving the testimonies of the things that have taken place. But as we realize that, as we've come to that place and we've exhorted and, and keep sharing who we are and what is happening, is that the manifestation presence of the Lord, that, it, it, that when we've had various people share at one time, different times rather, you know, in, uh, in the same gathering, but the predominantly giving him praise, that at the end of the evening, we re recognize that something just rose out of us, a corporate word had, rose, had risen out of us, and it was him. I will say this, in 2012, there was, to, to the beginning of 23rd, no, excuse me, let me back up. Yes, around 2012, we had a 100-day stretch here where we just started to, I just 
came and blessed the Lord with a guy, and it went on for a hundred days in this very room that I'm in. And people came from as far away as India. They came as far you know, as uh, Mexico, Germany, and there was never advertisement. We just by word of mouth, and they wanted to get into the presence of the Lord. We had people that actually walked in the door, and the the room was so filled with such the presence of God that they would just lay out on the floor, get up and leave, never knew who they were. And w and the whole rule, the whole time when this started, is what were the rules? The rule was, bless the Lord. A couple times people tried to show their ministry. That wasn't the case what they had to do here. Most people, when they came in, they just began to bless the Lord regardless of who they were. And when they blessed the Lord, the, ma the magnificent presence of God began to just happen to the point it literally took us through the he was literally taking us through the the processing in the as we see it in the in the book of Zechariah if I had more time I would tell you that things began even testimonies that as it felt like a word came forth or it was sung in the spirit new song it was all new song all flow like that everybody was important in this that Oftentimes, there was manifestation in the natural as it was being spoken in the, in, the, in, in the spirit. It was that powerful. Um, and so, but what happened is, is that we noticed that as we began to bless the Lord and as he would teach us that I had a personal revelation. And this is what I want to share with those especially that want to move into more into this kingdom structure. Every bit of the word that you know, every study you've done is extremely important to know. But it's not so much to prepare words for the people. When we come to this place, the people come into the gates with thanksgiving in their heart and to the courts of praise. We begin to praise. We lift up the sound of the trumpet. God goes up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. We start doing that. We start blessing the Lord according to his, his word. We exhort and we may put out teachings like this and let people uh, feed and, and learn and, and share with them the royalty of God and help and them to seek out the Lord and us to come alongside and encourage and exhort and if need be pray and and bring healing and watch deliverances take place but the focus is still on him and as we've come into this place where the Lord will begin to manifest even teach then at that point we still experience this that happens as a matter of fact we'll have gatherings and we won't name a recording till afterwards because we see what the lord was releasing but during this time it was so prevalent and uh, and so profound that when the when the lord when the, when the something would manifest and the things would be manifesting right in front of our very eyes somebody would come up and out of their word out of their knowledge out of their will would say this is what was written this is that that's written in this scripture here this is what i just read and then we would see the manifestation the logos come to pass we'd actually see the written word the logos be manifest right in front of our eyes and we knew that was the ro the royalty coming to pass and it, and it made so touched my heart so much to learn that jesus was the logo the mandate made flesh well it, when i looked at the in the book of acts i looked and i said lord how do we know that we're on our that this is really is is you and he said well he said um when peter he said take a look at peter what happened what happened when he stood up after being filled with the holy spirit and it says but this is this is acts chapter 2 verse 16 and 17 but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Now he's saying that because there was just this huge manifestation, demonstration, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And they thought they were drunk and, you know, and being accused. And Peter stands up. The first sermon in under the Holy Spirit, the first sermon as one with the Spirit of God really dwelling in that place, fulfilling a kingdom ministerial governmental position, stands up and he looks at the manifestation demonstration and the misunderstanding, the accusation that came. 
and he looks at the people he says this is that that the prophet joel spoke about and so i say that because as we've come into this place and we bless the lord we bless the lord as we come into this place we have almost well really weekly we there is a this is that and it manifesting in the scripture and our role is then to exhort and and to lift up and to see that these that these building stones these precious building stones the royalty of god have some of them are called to fulfill some of those offices to build that's a humbling thing but all are royalty and all have the ability and all have the 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 citizenship right to come stand before the father and and be fulfilled and be uh, brought into their destiny and that is our vision that is the role and in that where what more traveling the earth and all the things that are needed uh the lord has always kept us humbly uh, this personal he's always kept us humbly in a financial sense because we keep depending on him but it, but the sense is it feels rich even though if you ask me how does next month's bills work i wouldn't don't ask me that i just feel rich i just feel fulfilled in fulfilling an office and so i encourage this to you that you and i say this to you and say you are the preciousness of god you are his you are his children joint heirs you are royalty and your position is literally that as you come face to face with him because you're seated with him in heavenly places you've come to mount zion give him blessing go ahead bless him and watch what takes place knowing that you're in this place so i say that with all love i say it with as much humility as i can and tell you that it's an amazing journey in life and it's so far beyond the temporal of what we see and it's full of everything we've talked about the power and authority that he begins to exhibit this kingdom of god is incredible it is righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost and it really is an amazing place to be and to have your position in it is such a great thing it pleases the father and it's so honoring so i just want to thank you for um staying a little you know a bit longer than we've been trying to do but this is really important these governmental ministries of the kingdom we are blessed and you are highly favored and blessed so thank you and we'll i hope to see you real soon Bl blessings to you we'll see you soon